Hi, my name is Atif Darush, professor and consultant of obstetrics and gynecology. In this interactive lecture, actually, I targeted it to the doctors and non-doctors who are breast cancer interested in the uh, population and who are health providers. So the idea of this lecture comes because I noticed that the prevalence of breast cancer among the uh, female cancers is around one quarter. And most of the females all over the world are using hormones in one time of their life or another. So I try to communicate or to find out any relationship between the hormones and prevention of breast cancer and that's why I designed this lecture. Cancer in the year 2020, around quarter of ladies uh, died due to or suffered from cancer are suffering from breast cancer. So it is 25 percent of the reproductive age females. And in the year of 2022, around 77.5 of females are using hormones, hormonal contraceptives, in their reproductive uh, age. So if we try to correlate between the prevalence of cervical cancer among females and the frequent use of contraceptive hormones, we, the idea of this lecture is to try to find out a relationship between the hormones and the prevalence of cervical cancer. Moreover, if you look to the postmenopausal women, they represent around 26% of females all over the world. And many of those ladies are using hormones for menopausal symptoms. So adding the use of hormones in the menopause and postmenopause in addition to reproductive period hormones, this is a great category. More than one billion ladies all over the world are exposed to hormones. Why the ladies would have breast cancer? A quarter of ladies would have breast cancer. And one billion and more are using hormones in their life. And this is the idea of my talk. Okay? So I would like to be simplified. I like to be concise. The first point, which female is at risk of cervical cancer? We know, most of us know some information, but if we try to be scientific, we have to talk about history. If I am a doctor talking about history, the first question we ask the lady is the age at menarche, which is the age of starting menstrual period. If the lady has age at menarche low, at 12 years, 11 years, this means that it is, she is exposed to estrogen for a long time of her life. And estrogen is one of the provocative factors of breast cancer. The same applies for ladies who have late menopause. They are exposed to estrogen for a long time. Okay? So, early menarche and late menopause. Also, ladies regarding deliveries. The ladies who do not deliver, and they are called manipras in medical terms, they are exposed to estrogen, unopposed estrogen for a long time because no pregnancy and lactation. You know in pregnancy, no estrogen, but the dominant hormone is progesterone and also lactation progesterone. So they are liable to unopposed estrogen for a long time. What about family, uh, family history? Of course we know that some families have tendency to malignancy. I'll highlight this point. And what about surgical history? If the patient has a history of surgical excision of breast cancer or even uh, any cancer all over the body, she is liable to have breast cancer. And what about medications? This is the topic of this lecture. Medications are in include hormones, as I already mentioned. More than one billion ladies are exposed to hormones. An, an important issue which may increase the prevalence of uh, breast cancer is the lifestyle. Some ladies have bad lifestyle that enhance breast cancer. We have to increase the knowledge of ladies all over the world, in your community, wherever you are, whatever your speciality, you have to highlight these issues. Number one, obesity. Obesity is a great enemy to the doctors and to the patients as well. 
So obesity, they have to avoid obesity. They have to avoid wine drinking. They have to avoid cigarette smoking. They have to avoid exposure to carcinogens like pollution. You know now in the modern life, there is pollution of the atmosphere, pollution of water, agriculture, insecticides, and others. All these are pollutions and carcinogenic at the same time. If we talk about medications, we have to focus on three important issues. Combined oral contraceptive pills, which is the commonest hormone used by ladies, progesterone-only pills, and postmenopausal hormone and replacement therapy. And if you look to old publications from the WHO, the year 25, 20, 2005, you will mention that you will find that the WHO considered oral contraceptive pills as group one carcinogen. Group one carcinogen, which means it can cause cancer. Okay, this is WHO recommendation, but it's very old before 20 years. This is associated with liver cancer, cervical cancer, and breast cancer. That's why the WHO, before 20 years, considered combined oral contraceptive pills as group one carcinogen. And we are interested in screening and prevention of cancer of the female genital system and the breast as well. This is one of my old publications before 20 years regarding prevention of cervical cancer in patients using uh, progesterone only pills and we did not find relationship. But if you look to the UK, you will find that around 8% of women who develop breast cancer are uh, drinking wine and 8% are smokers, uh, sorry, are obese and overweight and just 1% of them are using oral contraceptive pills. So there is conflicting results. Some would mention that the prevalence of malignancy or breast cancer is high among women using oral contraceptive pills and others uh, are not saying this. In conclusion of this point of the talk, the risk factors for breast cancer are numerous. The use of hormonal contraception represents a small percentage. Okay? The second point of this talk, we have to ask ourselves, and ladies always ask us, if I take oral contraceptive pills, I am liable to have breast cancer or not? I need a clear answer, okay? I need a clear answer. So, the oral contraceptive pills, actually, if we look to the old studies, old studies, you will find that oral contraceptive pills increase the risk of breast cancer. Moreover, they mention that if they are using it for a long time, they are liable to breast cancer. If they stop breast, uh, or using uh, or taking COCs, within 10 years they are liable to have breast cancer. But if you look to the recent publications like this 2022, they mentioned that after five years of stowage of COCs, she, the risk is liable to any female. Why there, is, why there is difference between the old publications and the new publications? This is the question. This is another old study that women using COCs, we have 7% risk of developing cancer, uh, the, who ever use and who are currently using, they have 24% of developing breast cancer. And after 10 years, they would be free from the risk of breast cancer. But before looking to these uh, uh, 54 epidemiologic studies, you have to look to the Lancet 1996, very old publication, okay? But recent publication mentions that after five years, stoppage, they have no more risk for breast cancer related to COCs, okay? So this is a conflicting data if you look to the literature or publication or media and journalists and so on. They don't understand what's behind, what's behind the difference between the old reports and recent reports. But I would like to high, uh, highlight the importance of what's called hazard risk or breast cancer risk or odds ratio, or relative risk, all these are names of one thing, which is how the lady asks you, how risk I am 
to have this uh, breast cancer if I am using this drug or doing this and this. This is called relative risk. And relative risk is one. Normal is one or less. If it is more than one, she is at risk of breast cancer. Okay? So the same question, why there is conflicting data about the prevalence of breast cancer among COCs users? Because the old studies used high dose of estrogen. If you look to this figure, you will find they used estrogen in the beginning of 1960s, which is the start of use of oral contraceptive pills all over the world. You will find they used 150 microgram of ethinyl estradiol. But the recent studies used 20 microgram, which is one seventh of the uh, previous dose. This is one of the main causes of the discrepancy between the old and recent publications. Another important issue that the estrogen type, which is ethinyl estradiol, is carcinogenic regarding breast. And if we change this estrogen, this would be a better option. Also, progesterone type used first generation, second, third generations differ from fourth generation of progestogens. And most of these studies published all over the world, despite the good number of cases, thousands and even millions of ladies, they are observational studies which are uh, not so good studies for conclusion. So, in conclusion of the relationship between COCs and breast cancer, we have to mention that there is no different study so far that highlights the relationship of COCs and breast cancer, uh, general, uh, generally even cancer all over the body. And some publications, recent publications, mentioned that we have to consider other pre-existing risk factors like excessive body weight, smoking, wine drinking, uh, family history and others. Now, I am convinced that COC is, is a cause of breast cancer. How does it cause breast cancer? This is the question. The question comes because the receptors of the breast, the breast glands have receptors. Okay, what's the receptors? Like the key and the lock. If you go to your, your room and put the key inside the lock, this is the receptor. The lock is the receptor of the key, okay? The breast tissue, normal and abnormal breast tissue, have receptors. These receptors, the key is estrogen. So the breast cancer, breast tissue has receptors for estrogen and also for progesterone. And if we look to the receptors, they, the estrogen and progesterone stimulate proliferation of normal and abnormal breast tissue, which means growth of the, uh, of the breast tissue. But if they are exposed to other exogenous carcinogens, as I already mentioned, this will make abnormal pathway of proliferation, which is the carcinogenesis pathway. So estrogen is an important provocative factor for developing malignancy in breast. And one of the theories, it stimulates what's called growth factors, which enhance growth of the tissues and proliferation of the tissues. This is somewhat complicated figure, but I have to simplify. It's very important because estrogen receptors, I told you, key and lock, okay? The lock, the receptors are present inside the nucleus of every cell of the body, including the breast, okay? And also, some of the locks or the receptors are on the membrane of the cell, any cell, okay? So the estrogen goes inside the lock, it will stimulate the receptors inside the nucleus and the surface or the membrane of the cell. And the stimulation of the lock at the surface will lead to cell proliferation and this is the starting point of breast cancer. So estrogen matters, which is, means that estrogen is one of the main causes of the vulnerable malignancy and breast cancer because it stimulates estrogen receptor alpha, which is present in the membrane of the cells. And if it is uh, stimulating the nucleus uh, receptors, this is not important regarding the vulnerable malignancy. So 
the, if we look back to the most of the uh, uh, contraceptive pills since 1960s, they are using ethinyl estradiol as an estrogen. <laughs> Sorry. And this estrogen is synthetic estrogen. It's important because some pharmacological advantages, that's why they use it. And there is risk of using this ethinyl estradiol which ends after 10 years of storage. So we accuse the estrogen, particularly ethanyl estradiol, as a cause of breast cancer. What's the solution? The solution is to avoid estrogen. How to avoid estrogen from combined? It's called combined means two. Combined or contraceptive pills means two. What are these two? Estrogen plus progesterone hormone. Okay? We will omit we will exclude estrogen hormone. Why exclude? Because estrogen is not important for inhibition of ovulation. The importance of inhibition of ovulation is progesterone. So we can neglect or omit estrogen, and by this way, we avoid the risk of estrogen. This is a good solution. And we can, we'll talk about progesterone. We can change this estrogen by a natural estrogen, not synthetic one, which is called estradiol. But unfortunately, this natural estrogen stimulates the receptors, alpha estrogen receptor alpha in the membrane as ethinyl estradiol. So this option is not good regarding breast cancer. It may have some advantages on other systems of the body. But so it is not a good, it is agonistic to breast cancer, uh, breast uh, estrogen receptors. What is the final solution regarding estrogen problem? We have to change estrogen by another type of estrogen. And here comes the idea of this lecture. We change estrogen, which is ethanyl estradiol or estradiol, to what's called estetrol, which is estrogen 4. It, used, it is usually formed by the baby inside the pregnant uterus. And now we can synthesize it artificially by, from the uh, soya bean uh, outside in the labs. This estrogen is excellent. Why is it excellent? Because it does not stimulate estrogen alpha receptors in the membranes. So it does not stimulate cell proliferation of the breast. So it is safe for ladies if they are used combination using estetrol, not ethanyl estradiol. And here comes this revolution or breakthrough in, in, 19, in 2021, just before three years. This is the achievement that we introduce another estrogen, not the, uh, not the carcinogenic ethanyl estradiol, which is estetrol. It's excellent by activation of the nuclear locks, which are receptors, and inhibition of the uh, membrane receptors which are carcinogen. Okay, you understand this point. So uh, this is the advantage of introduction of estro, it's for breast, it's good anti-estrogenic on the breast cells. And this estro is given in a high dose, 14.2 because of uh, uh, less bioavailability. So in conclusion, we can use estro instead of ethinyl estradiol and in a state of estradiol valerate because it would eliminate the impact of estrogen on normal and pathologic uh, breast tissue. You have to know also that if we give the lady estetrol and she has breast cancer, the estrol would make shrinkage of the breast cancer. It enhances apoptosis, which means decrease of the size of the malignancy and overcoming this malignancy. So it is advantageous if it is used for prevention of breast cancer and if it is used for patients with breast cancer. And this is the new achievement in the field of prevention of breast cancer among more than one billion of ladies using hormones in their lives. Okay? The second achievement is progesterone part of the combined or contraceptive pills or any progesterone part. You know that progesterone it matters. It's very important because progesterone is the main hormone that inhibits ovulation. Estrogen is not, in the COCs, is not 
used for inhibition of ovulation because they don't have estrogen. Okay? So, progesterone is an excellent, uh, an excellent member of the combined oral contraceptive defense because it inhibits ovulation in addition to other mechanisms. And the progesterone only methods include oral tablets, which are called mini pills or pop, include uh, Mirina, which is progesterone releasing intrauterine device, include injectable progesterone, and include implanone or nixplanone, which are subdermal implants. These are the progesterone containing uh, methods of contraception. But if you look to some sources, you will find there is a risk of breast cancer for ladies using progesterone methods only. You told me that estrogen is carcinogenic and you will get rid of estrogen. I let my patients use progesterone only, but studies found that even progesterone only would initiate, would stimulate, would be correlated to breast cancer. Even using intrauterine device secreting hormone progesterone, there it increases the risk of breast cancer. Only pills, injectables, and so on. If we look in short to the progesterone, you will find what's called first, second, third, and fourth generation, which means the development, uh, pharmaceutical development of progesterone, uh, passed through a way of development a long way. But in short, the first generations are more liable to stimulate breast cancer. The recent generations are less liable to stimulate breast cancer or to stimulate the receptors in the breast tissue to have breast cancer. And here comes the concept. And these ideas, uh, these studies found that progesterone only contraceptive methods have the same risk of combined oral contraceptive pills because these are old studies, old studies. But if you look to uh, the recent studies, you will find mild increase. The relative risk is 1.2 or 29. So particularly some types of progesterone, I don't like to go through scientific terms like levonorgestrel, nergestrel, and medroxyprogesterone acetate, which is injectable contraception every three months, you know it. 150 milligram of medroxyprogesterone acetate. It, will, it, it is one of the worst progesterone regarding breast cancer stimulation. Uh, it has been mentioned in some publications, it's 20 fold more potent than estrogen 2, which is estradiol for stimulation of the receptors in the membrane, which stimulates cell growth and proliferation. So it is risky regarding breast cancer. And here another study, it's less more than two. I told you one or less is good, one or more is bad. Here is this study, 2.2, it's risk of the heart. Even subdermal implants have the risk of breast cancer in studies. Marina, which is intrauterine device secreting levonorgestrel, also has a risk which is more than 1.2, more than normal. And in this very recent publication before a few months, I found it. It, it shows that progesterone, which is P4, and the synthetic progestogens, which are medroxyprogesterone acetate, norosinderone acetate, and levonorgestrel, have the risk of breast cancer initiation, cell migration, and proliferation. But drospironone, which is a fourth generation progesterone, is the least, is the least progesterone that stimulates breast cancer development. This is an in vitro study. From this point, we take the target of this point, uh, lecture, which we have to change progesterones, which are used all over the world by this new one, which is drosperinone, which is drosperinone. So this is solution. We have to get rid of levonorgestrel first, second, third generations, and we have to use the fourth generation, which is drosperinone, which is proved to be less, the least least stimulatory to develop breast cancer for ladies. And this is called drosperinone or spironolactone, spironolactone agonist. So it is the least potent drug. So we have to stop here. Now, you told me, if we talk about uh, estrogen, that estetrol is the best, okay? And now, when we talk about progesterone, you told me that drosperinone is the best. Why not to combine estetrol and drosperinone 
The rosperinol will make ovulation inhibition and estrogen will make bleeding control. So this is an ideal combined oral contraceptive pill to be used. And that's why this ideal one comes to the markets recently by sharing company, which contains rosperinol and estrogen to have the advantages of uh, prevention or least simulation of breast cancer in the female. And this is the target of this combination. Last few points. What's the impact of age uh, on COC's breast cancer risk? This is another question. The lady tells you that I am 40 years, I am 45, I am 50. Can I use oral contraceptive pills or not? This is an important question. We have to inform the ladies clearly that with age, the risk of malignancy increases all over the body, okay? The risk increases with age, except some juvenile malignancies like uh, androplastoma and so on. So with time, risk of malignancy increases. But we cannot guarantee that the, uh, that the, uh, the use of COCs in old age is a risk factor for old ladies. But some publication mentions that if the patient has no risk factor, like smoking and so and so, she can use it until 50s, okay? But if she has a risk factor, like this already mentioned, she has to stop at 35. Why 35? Because after 35, she is liable to malignancy due to aging, not due to the drug, okay? So for menopausal and perimenopausal women, they can continue on COC in this age to avoid menopausal symptoms like hot flashes and so on. Some publications mention that when the lady reaches 50 years, she has to stop COCs, the traditional COCs, and medroxyprogesterone acid, which is injectable, and they have to change by progesterone only pills or marina to have the least effect. But now, the new achievement and breakthrough, she can use the combined prosperinone and estrogen as well. So, the hormonal replacement therapy for postmenopausal women can lead to breast cancer. And this is a very big study of 1.3 million ladies in Norway. And it found that there is an increased risk uh, of breast cancer in in, uh, in the Norway for uh, the women in the postmenopausal women. What's the solution to avoid this risk in the postmenopausal women using hormones? The same. We have to switch to estrogen, which is estrogen, and progesterone, which is prosperinone. You know, we give combination in the postmenopausal if the uterus is still, but if the patient has a strictomy, we, uh, we don't get progesterone and give estrogen only. So we can give estrogen plus drosperinone. So lastly, we have many patients with family history of breast cancer. What to do for this group? We have to inform them that the around 70 to 80% of women with breast cancer do not have family history. So don't be confused, don't be panicked due to one of your family's members have breast cancer. This is the first point. The second point, we have to consider the risk-benefit ratio. And several genes are variable. And you know that all of us, all of us have two important genes which protect our body from malignancy, which are called BRCA1 and BRCA2. BRCA1 in chromosome 17 to in chrome 13. This is long and this is long also in R. These hormones, these genes protect our bodies from malignancy. Some people, some people have uh, mutation, which means defective genes, so they are liable to develop malignancies, including breast cancer and ovarian cancer, including prostatic cancer in male and pancreatic cancer. And breast cancer also in male, if, the, if he has a defective BRCA1 uh, gene, defect mutation, he is liable to have breast cancer as well. And all publications mention that if the patient has a family member with breast cancer, she is 11 times liable to have breast cancer. But now, recent publication just double risk of breast cancer. So the last point, can you, you the whole talk about the risks of COCs. Can COCs have some benefits, some advantages regarding malignancy? Yes, 
it can. Not all COCs are hazardous. They are beneficial for menstrual control, for some symptoms of various cyst prevention and so on. So, but regarding malignancy, they are protective against ovarian cancer, protective against endometrial cancer, protective against colorectal cancer. This is the advantage of using COCs. So if we put these concepts in our mind, we would protect against breast cancer by using new combinations of estrogen and drosperinone, and the patient will have the advantage of uh, protection against ovarian cancer, endometrial cancer, and colorectal cancer, as mentioned. And here is the photo of my professor, I assisted this professor, he is my teacher, uh, uh, Professor Mahmoud Fathallah. He, uh, 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 he is the founder of a theory which is called incessant ovulation, which means that the COC is prevent ovulation, so the patients would have less ovarian cancer. And he published this theory in Lancet in 1976, and it is Till now, his theory is good, and it protects up to 50%. And this is uh, one of our recent publications on the prevalence of endometrial cancer about in, in women using progesterone only, and we did not find pres, uh, endometrial cancer, and this is a, a recent published, and of course, colorectal cancer. In conclusion, in conclusion of this talk, sorry to be uh, uh, more scientific, but it, I, I, I had to go through the scientific background, we have to mention that all hormonal use could slightly raise the odds of breast cancer and COCs are not recommended for women with a family history of breast cancer or uh, mutation of the BRCA1 and 2. To decide whether to proceed with a particular treatment, one should always consider the balance between the benefits and risk. And here comes the message of the lecture, which is introduction of estrol and drosperinone to the field of hormonal contraception and HRT, which is hormonal replacement therapy, is a promising approach to minimize breast cancer risk. And we are waiting, we are waiting for studies and research on putting uh, drosperinone in intrauterine device, in injectable forms, in, uh, in we already have many pills containing drosperinone waiting for extensive use of the drosperinone to protect against breast cancer. Thank you.